Imagine looking at your neighborhood and not seeing yourself in it anymore. You don't see yourself enjoying its new hipster cafes or see your community being represented in the local art spaces. Housing BK Gallery and Jazz from the Bushwick Silent Barn space are trying to prevent this from happening. Bushwick and a lot of the areas that are being taken, um, they use art as a way to make it seem like they're doing something constructive for the community, but they're really not. Because when you look at the artists who are painting, the majority of them are not people from, that are from this community. They're actually like white artists with a bunch of privilege that are coming in here and like painting. And then when we would want to get the opportunities to paint, we were told no. Brooklyn's latest gentrification process started back in 2005, when developers began building luxury condos along the Williamsburg waterfront, which led to a domino effect on the rest of Brooklyn. Primarily black and Latino neighborhoods were and are still being displaced, and now there is a slow rise of creatives reclaiming spaces in their neighborhood. To look into this act of reclaiming space for artists that represent the community, I caught up with the Housing BK Gallery in bed -Stuy. Just It's a space that's just dedicated to prioritizing those marginalized voices. You know, obviously mm -hmm. sticking more within the black community, but obviously within the black community there's multiple, you know, subcategories. Housing BK Gallery first caught the attention of the New York art world last summer when articles were describing the space as one that is attempting to advance the inclusion of artists of color and degentrify, which they define as taking over a white-owned space. So that statement was made as a response to the space that formerly occupied this gallery, which was American Medium, and they are now in Chelsea, and they sort of helped facilitate a lot for us. So much of the kind of pre-opening phase was literally like American Medium helping us every step of the way. And so for them to sort of like leave the space where it was just like every other Brooklyn gallery, like a white owned space with a lot of um, primarily white artists being shown here, us coming in was effectively de-gentrifying the space and giving this space back to a predominantly black community and a historically black community. The Housing BK Gallery opened up last September and replaced another gallery called American Medium, which represents primarily white artists. But let's not get it twisted. Housing BK is not trying to exclude the white art community. When we opened, a lot of our conversations were not about exclusion, but in fact about inclusion, mm -hmm. just including all of the artists who we feel are just like they just so happen to be excluded from a lot of other spaces. So it has nothing to do with excluding white people and we obviously invite everyone into the space and a lot of them are here like, you know, for the dialogue. But Housing VK aren't the only ones trying to reclaim spaces for black and brown artists in Brooklyn. Jazz is a youth and arts coordinator at Silent Barn, a DIY community space in Bushwick when she noticed a building in her neighborhood was bought and used as a space for primarily white creatives, she saw an opportunity. Silent Barn, I mean, the best way I could describe it is like a very DIY, hipster, white, punk kind of venue. So there's like a show here every night. I come into the space more to like reclaim space and like give back to the people so that they're able to create and um, keep like cultural relevance alive in like super gentrified areas. Jazz created two programs dedicated to black and brown creatives. Color Scenes, where she coordinates art events, and Educated Little Monsters, a youth arts program. So, like that's what Color Scenes is about. It's about um, preserving culture, um, giving back resources. Elm is about, Educated Little Monsters is about giving youth the resources that they need to feel empowered in their communities, even through the changes. And like, when we run classes, we also talk to them a lot about the changes and they develop their expressions that, that are already in them, but no one is asking them how they feel about these changes. So people think that we don't know, or we just don't care. No, these kids, they see what's happening. Elm um, reclaims and takes back spaces physically. Color Scenes does that through the streets and like, putting up art. So like Silent Barn being a very white DIY venue, we decided to put in a proposal to paint the whole building 
Um, so we did the whole building from top to bottom. As many fear that the Brooklyn community and artistic culture might completely transform due to gentrification, NYU urban policy and planning professor Mitchell Moss thinks otherwise. So the arts organizations which you're talking about I think reflect the fact that they want to maintain that coherent arts and uh, I think probably African-American kind of cultural uh, cohesiveness there and I think that will always be part of Brooklyn. I don't think neighborhoods really go through a complete change. What happens is that new people come in and they live side by side but I think certainly um, we're, we're seeing many more mixed neighborhoods and the only areas that don't change are the ones where there's vast amount of public housing. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that the very few neighborhoods in Brooklyn have not changed ethnic or racial identities over the past 50 years. Today, as black and brown families in Brooklyn are being displaced left and right, organizers are coming together to represent and support their community through the arts. Our heads above the water. So ELM is just a creative platform for them to just be expressive and be like, this is what this influx of people, when they move in, this is how we suffer behind it, but they show it through, through the arts. Whether it is through taking over a gallery or community space, they are attempting to represent and serve their community on their own terms in hopes of preserving the community's culture and providing a platform for young artists of color. Also for the art world at large, just to see that this, this can be done. You have no excuse not to show artists of color and black artists because we just did a whole, you know, year, two years, three years of programming just artists of color and black artists. We're here and there's no reason not to be showing our work. It's representation.